Hey, it's time for another mailbag. Hey. <laughs> lighting. Uh, not exactly what I was trying to do. What do we want to do with this lighting? I don't know. Lighting. Yes. Light. All right, well, we don't want to shine it at the camera. Mailbag at night. So uh, let me briefly show you the... Uh, Retro Friends by Night. Alright, so today's mailbag features some products from Adafruit. Comes in a package that looks like this. Adafruit, uh, they'll sell you an Arduino. They'll sell you a Pimeroni. They'll sell you a Pimeroni hat. They'll sell you a LED thingy. Anyway, let's get this thing open. This is our first of several packages today. Ah, ah, oh, ooh, okay. Let's see what we got. I'm excited about this one. So, we've got a whole bunch of what appears to be some potentiometers aka knobs Let's bring one out I like that they have a resealable version of this static bag which is super useful uh, I keep all of my bags in a bag called the bag of bags and in that bag are all my my electronic component bags so that I can reuse them um, for other electronic components ah. okay so this is a right angled uh, potentiometer. You can see that the legs come down in an L shape and you can plug this into a board and then you have a vertical. This is for the passive mixer that I had JL, JCL PCB manufacturer prototype for me. Um, I'm trying to take some of these DIY kits that are from China, so I have a bunch of them. I'm trying to take some of these DIY kits from China and make them plug and play. So you could buy, it just makes those things more useful that you can find on eBay from Hong Kong. Uh, still working on the lighting situation here at the Retro Cave. Um, you know, going to be moving to a new studio eventually, looking to do some better lighting scenarios. But for now, I mean, if I turn this off, you can see what it looks like in my room, which is fine, but I'm dark. And you don't like that. I wish I had that, that filter. I could put that filter on. But Anyway, so uh, Adafruit. Let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, so did I just pull this bag out? No, this is a different bag. I think this is an additional set. Yeah, so I got two sets. I wanted to get a, a smattering of switches and pots. Now, I already have a lot of pots. And I'm still trying to figure out what to do with all of them. But... Um, yeah, those are all pots, so lots of pots. I'm going to put them uh, in that, uh, I have that video BNC mixer that I'm breaking down and rebuilding. A video I haven't published yet. I should probably publish it. I will soon, someday. Okay, uh, actually, I don't really even need to open this quite yet. This is a uh, not from Adafruit. This is a set of uh, half watt resistors in a variety pack. A uh, pretty good deal on this. They're all carbon film resistors. I just didn't have a lot of these, so I got a variety. I have a lot of quarter watt and eighth watt. Eighth watt are the really tiny ones that are through hole that everybody puts in little kits and such. Oh, I put a kit together today and I didn't even film it. I should have uh, put together a... Uh, for channel, multi-channel sign generator, not just sign, but wave generator. Uh, wave generator that does, uh, from a kit, I think it was like four bucks or something. Or it's an N555 timer, any 555 Okay, so this one comes from Altatech in Plymouth, Minnesota. And uh, I don't have the Kinko's letter opener today, so I'm going to have to find something better. 
uh, or rather nearer. Here, I'll use this, this screwdriver, which always works just perfectly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's getting cold. It's near Halloween. Let's get this thing open. Nice packaging, a little overkill. I think this is one of the series of uh, sound cards that uh, that I purchased. Uh, looks to be. I guess we can get this open a little bit further and take a look at it. So I, I had bought those uh, media station machines for fifteen dollars each. And I thought I would upgrade them. Okay, so this is a full height card. Oh, I almost bought another one of these today. So this is actually a Sound Blaster X-Fi. I'm just going to carefully get this sticker. Oh, I ripped it. Oh, well. Uh, carefully get this open. Looks pretty, pretty clean. Uh, so that's what it looks like, and you know what we're seeing here is a Sound Blaster X5. It, it has all all the stuff on the one end. Uh, it does not have a laser uh, toss link or SPD, whatever they call it. It's a toss link socket, uh, and I saw one today for twenty two dollars. Maybe I should get that one. Try not to spend too much money. It looks like there's some LEDs that were optional that they removed. Or never, just never had them. Or maybe they broke off. Huh. I don't know. But, uh, cool board. Um, I'm not even sure what that connector's for. But, uh, eh, I don't really need this. This was like, so... How do you record something while you play it? And when you switch to Toslink, you can't do that anymore because Realtek doesn't do that. So I, I was thinking about having a separate machine or just trying to find a use for a Sound Blaster. I mean, it was only like, I don't know, $17 for this. I might go back to eBay and get that one that I was looking at. But I have a promise with myself not to buy too much on eBay because I been uh, having a little bit of a problem lately buying too much on eBay and I need to save my money for a house and a new studio almost there just need to figure that out um, all right so this is what a letter from Belarus looks like I've uh, blocked out my address but uh, you might be able to see somebody else's address uh, anyway it's a uh, par avion so it came from Europe and uh, it's got a lot written in Cyrillic so I believe th these are other sockets for Nixie tubes, and I'm right. And I, I so I got a clock kit last year for a Nixie tube clock, and I bought the one clock kit that's very difficult to uh, find the parts for. I really should have gotten a different one, but uh, I, I like the style of it. So I got that, and I have a ton of those. Tubes. I have like a hundred of them. A hundred of the tubes. So I'm good on tubes for the rest of my life. Possibly my offspring's life. Yeah. So these are actually ovular sockets. Uh, I'll take one out because it's hard to see. These are kind of oval shaped sockets. Uh, they look like this. Uh, I've seen them on eBay. Uh... They're not cheap. I think I paid like twenty dollars. These are NOS, so new old stock. Uh, they don't make this stuff anymore. I thought I was trying to avoid these, but they do fit the uh, the tubes that I have. So, and I guess that's it. Just the one bag. Okay, this is also this is from their Ukraine. Also came through Europe. Uh, did this deal by hand? Did not go through eBay. Um, it's. Uh, it's just a seller. Uh, I forget the name of his website. I don't know, but he has a call sign. He's uh, K O eight O K O eight zero D B. I don't know. I think that's a uh, ham radio call sign. 
Anyway, nice guy. Uh, probably an older gentleman. He uses something called Pay in the Ear or something like that. Not PayPal. Anyway, it was nice to work with him. Uh, he has a list of parts. You go through the parts. You send him an email. He sort of like sends you a request. So, uh, my father is actually a uh, ham radio operator. So, I will uh, tell him about this guy. So that maybe he can raise him on the uh, the radio. But anyway, regardless of that, uh, we've got all sorts of uh, gadgetry from this guy. And I am a big fan of switches. Anything that's a switch um, or a... Uh, especially older switches because the elegance of those older switches and buttons is is gone today everything is pretty much the same today but back in the day they were like really machined well there was a mechanics to them and uh, there were more options and more diversity and sometimes it was harder to find replacement parts admittedly uh, because they were so almost unique items uh, wish I had my Kinko's opener I don't know where it went Back to the screwdriver. <laughs> oh. But I bought a 25-position uh, switch from this guy. It's never been used, it appears. Maybe it has. <sighs> Little grungy. Can clean that up. But yeah, it's got two decks and 25 positions, which could be military hardware. Don't know. Oh. One, two, three, four. I mean, good luck finding one of these out there now. You're never going to find this. This is like the last one of these. I mean, I can dial up so many different settings here. So the question now is what settings and how do I make this reusable? It obviously was recycled because there have been some... Someone's cut them. But I'll just put... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably put, um, they're called DuPont connectors, but I'll just uh, have a, a, a solder it there and bring out a DuPont connector that's that little thing that slides over a, uh, a uh, jumper, you know, or a header on a board, but, uh, oh yeah, oh, I mean, that's just a lot of options. Who knows what I'll do with that? Probably audio inputs or maybe signals or sounds or channels or exports I'm not sure that's pretty cool I can make one heck of a switcher but it would only ha it would have to be one switch like one and, and you're like I'm on 74 and I'll have to make a, a plate for it I'm glad it came with this knob this it's called a uh, rooster head or a chicken head knob and uh, awesome so that, that was, uh, I think, $20, which is kind of expensive, but the guy could probably use it. And uh, he's kept that for however many years, or recycled that. Is that the 25 one? Because it... Oh! Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. I bought three things, so let's see what he, else he, he sold me. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, El Retro Garbage over there. Okay, uh, let's see. So we got two of them. Two of them. Um, this one, and it's so cute. It has Cyrillic markings on it. All right. Ooh, that one doesn't seem to work. Something's going on there. It's frozen up. Well, that's what you get. It's definitely got a lot of corrosion on it. I could probably repair this. It needs cleaned. Definitely has some corrosion on it. Um, that, oh, you know what it's missing? It's missing the screw. If it had the screw, it would work. <laughs> I don't want to inhale that. But, uh, so it is working. Just got to get it, and all that crap's falling out of it. Uh, uh, you can't see it on the camera, but there's definitely some stuff coming out of it. All right, so very cool. Two Russian switches of uh, extreme variety here. I'm not sure. Let's. I think they're both 25 position. 
And I'm kind of surprised because I thought there were some other switches. Oh, here we go. Oh, he sold me two of them. So this this whole thing was less than 50 bucks, but uh, I think uh, with the shipping. It wasn't too bad, and then the shipping came in, but shipping wasn't that bad, considering it came, like, over 6,000 kilometers. So, do the math on that. How many miles is that, kids? Ugh. All right, and this is actually less interesting than I thought it would be. But I still believe that this thing has more settings than I could get on a regular... <sighs> it's tight. I have to get a... Yeah. Well, this one has uh, two active decks. And uh, it's definitely recycled. But it has... And those are bent. And then uh, it's got a couple of other uh, features, like, I think, I don't know, it looks like there's 25 settings there, so th that's pretty, that's pretty intense all in of itself. Um, why so many switches, Herb? Well, I don't know, but these two are going to be great, these other two. This one's alright, I, I have several like that. Hard to find these days, usually about 10 positions is the farthest you can go. Without paying an exorbitant price, so. Just so letting you know, it's not like it used to be. I mean, I think 20 years ago, you could have walked into a place and bought, you know, whatever you wanted. Did I open this already? I did. What's left? It's like this box. This one comes to me from Greenville, Texas, and it says Genuine Sound Blaster on the outside, so I believe this is another Sound Blaster. Hopefully, this one has the. Uh, the laser inputs. Let's take a look. Alright. Maybe not. I've got more sound blasters coming and other sound cards. I'm sort of wanting that one sound blaster, but I have nothing to put it in. Oh, I do have one thing to put it in, I guess. Up. Oh. Yeah, this is almost an, this is the smaller version of the X5. It's like that lower profile version. I really don't need another sound blaster, but none of these have the toss link. It would be nice to have one with a toss link. So I might get it. This is an older sound blaster. What does it say here? It says, um... Oh, this is actually a uh, ISA. Uh, or, no, that's a PCI. This is the sound blaster live. Looks like that. On that side, and it looks like that on that side. This is an older card. Uh, I think this might be for the monorail. I'm not really sure yet. Could be for the Pentium. Might be for neither. Uh, yeah, I can always sell them again. You know, somebody will buy them. Maybe I'll get some of my money back. Um, some of these were just to go right into the collection anyway, because I don't really have a project for them. But I like sound blasters. And I like the idea of having a sound blaster. So I'm probably going to get that uh, Toslink one. We'll see. I have a machine over here that I'm going to use primarily for editing and... I don't know, streaming stuff. And, you know, I just feel bad buying it. Alright, uh, what else? thought there was one more, but looks like that's it for today. So thanks for tuning in to Mailbag. If you'd like to support us, you know where to go. And, uh, yeah. All right, turn that off for a bit. Uh, what is on the floor? Oh, look what it is! It is the Kinko's letter opener. I found it. It was on the ground. Well, wonders never cease. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.